So right now, the crypto market doesn't look too great. Between rising tensions in Russia and Ukraine, interest rates rising, and Joe Biden potentially issuing new regulations on crypto in the coming weeks, there's a lot to be concerned about and aware of over the next couple of weeks in crypto. So let's talk about it. Right now, Bitcoin's price in terms of technicals doesn't look good. We recently broke below the 50-day simple moving average, which is historically a very bearish sign for Bitcoin and the overall crypto market. Every single time we have broken and below this 50 day simple moving average it has indicated further downside in the market and that a lot of bearish things are to come in addition to this bitcoin's price also recently broke below forty thousand dollars per coin which has acted as a key support for bitcoin over the last 12 to 18 months so not only did we break below the 50 day simple moving average but we also broke below forty thousand dollars per coin the good news here is that we have not yet had a daily close below forty thousand dollars per coin so in important over the next couple of days is going to be can bitcoin's price stay above forty thousand dollars on the daily charts and close above that because if we don't well we very well could be seeing a retest of that thirty five thousand dollar per coin that blue line on the chart which was the low we had a couple weeks ago next thing i want to talk about though is going to be some opinions from pantera capital ceo this is one of the leading blockchain venture funds in the world and he came out and said the other day that crypto is one of the best places to store your wealth during Fed rate hikes. And while a lot of people are concerned about interest rates rising, he said the bottom line is, is Bitcoin and crypto are going to decouple from traditional markets fairly soon. Right now, over the last couple of months, we have seen Bitcoin really mimic tech stocks in terms of movement. But he says over the next couple of months, he's predicting that we will see these decouple very soon as Bitcoin and the crypto market doesn't just follow US markets and it shouldn't he said so over the next couple of months he's expecting that bitcoin to be the place where a lot of people are putting their money as interest rates start rising really impacting tech companies and companies in general all across the u.s and around the world so he said right now when you look at bitcoin bitcoin is down 19 percent year over year during a period where the fed has printed five trillion dollars so the fed has printed trillions of dollars yet bitcoin's price is down so if you look at those numbers it looks like bitcoin is still cheap and that is what he's saying right now he th thinks that people are going to start moving more money into crypto into bitcoin as rates start to rise it's not going to happen today tomorrow but it's going to be a process that happens over the next 12 to 18 months. Next thing is going to be one of the biggest stories in the crypto space today, which I posted about on Twitter. So if you don't follow me there, make sure to do so because I can't cover all the stories in these videos. I just picked the highlights. So make sure to follow me on Twitter. But one of the big stories that just came out was that crypto.com recently rebranded themselves to Kronos. And this is something that we've seen quite a few times over the last couple of months. We first saw Binance Smart Chain rebrand themselves to BNB Chain. And now we're seeing crypto crypto.com rebrand themselves to Kronos. The reason for this, they said in their announcement, is that right now, the new name properly reflects the decentralized nature of CRO and recognizes the explosive growth of the Kronos ecosystem. They said the Kronos ecosystem represents the next major phase in the adoption and utilization of Web3 by hundreds of millions of users, and they want to make sure that their name encompasses that. Right now, user adoption for the Kronos um, chain has grown immensely over the last couple of months. We've seen that now Kronos um, chain has over 350,000 unique wallet addresses. Over 120 dApps have chosen to use the Kronos ecosystem to build on. And we're already seeing that the TVL is over $2 billion, which is higher than that of Cardano and many layer one cryptos. And 3,500 CR CRC20 tokens have been minted since just November 2021. So we have seen a massive explosion in this entire ecosystem, not only in terms of more users on their exchange, but also more projects actually building on their ecosystem, which is why they've rebranded themselves to Kronos um, to really encompass everything they're trying to do moving forward with Web 3.0. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about regulations, because over the last couple of months, we've seen a lot of countries come out with new regulations on crypto, and a lot of this has been good news. So Brazil just recently listed the world's first DeFi exchange traded fund. Two companies actually listed DeFi exchange traded funds on 
um, stock exchanges in Brazil. So the first was a company called Hashdex, which released their ETF, their DeFi ETF, under the symbol DeFi 11. And this is going to follow and mirror um, 12 different digital assets spanning across DApps, service protocols, and settlement networks. And the second company to do this is called Rio de, Rio de Janeiro's QR Capital, which also launched their own DeFi ETF called QDF11. So both of these companies are issuing the world's first ever DeFi ETF. And this is important because it gives institutions an easy way to invest in crypto without having to actually hold crypto like coins and assets in their portfolio. They can just buy an ETF that mimics certain DeFi projects, and then they're all good to go. So this is going to open the door up to millions, if not billions of dollars more coming into the crypto space. Last thing I want to talk about is going to be with Spain, because Spain also had a big announcement the other day, and that is that Spain's central bank approved Bit2Me Global to be the country's first crypto exchange and service provider. So according to the recent announcement, the exchange will be able to provide banks based in Spain with a white label service for crypto trading on their platform. This means that banks in the country are going to be able to easily offer their customers crypto trading. And this is a huge deal. Imagine if US had this where banks in the US could easily offer crypto trading. Like, yes, we're starting to see this, but now that Bit2Me, which is one of the leading uh, crypto exchanges in all of Spain with over a billion dollars in trading volume, now that they've gotten this approval for white label their white label service, this is going going to be huge for mass adoption in Spain, and hopefully we see it more across Europe over the coming months. So anyways, a lot is going on in the market. There's a lot of volatility, a lot of uncertainty, but overall, still good news when we're looking at long-term adoption in the crypto space. So if you're worried right now and you're thinking, well, crypto market is in trouble, well, yeah, in the short term, looks like there's a lot to be concerned about in the market. But if you're a long-term holder right now, what I'm doing, I'm dollar cost averaging into some of my favorite projects. Um, I like Bitcoin, Poly. Polygon, Cadena, a bunch of others, which I talk about on Twitter. I am consistently not selling any of my positions and I'm just holding long term. So you just have to ask yourself, are you in it for the short term or long term? And then base your strategy off of that. But let me know your thoughts on the overall market, what you think. Are you bullish? Are you bearish? And I'll see you guys in the next episode. See ya.